Things are popping, pop, a Philadelphia way. We're gonna drop it, drop on all the music they play on the bandstand. Bandstand. Gently, dear people, gently, gently. You incite this kind of a riot wherever you go. I try to, I try to. Would you please, let me take half a second. When this lady walked on the stage at the Apollo Theater in New York, which is not the kindest place in the world. I mean, that's a rough audience. How old were you when you were? four. Four. Mm -hmm. You were to sing what song? I was to sing Teach Me Tonight. In the key of what, what key? B flat. B flat. Yes. How many men in the orchestra? Many, many. Ten, fifteen, many men. Four-year-old walks out on the stage, they start to play the song, and what do you do? Well, they started to play the song in the wrong key. And you're four? And I'm four, but I knew it was the wrong key. I was no dummy. <laughs> no siree. What and did I, you do? I turned around to them and I said, you're playing in the wrong key. And after they fell on the floor and got up again, they played it in the right key. And the audience applauded? They loved me, thank God, because if they don't love you at the Apollo, they lynch you. So you have to be good but, uh, there. You were four, but you have worked on Broadway, you work nightclubs. I mentioned the fact that you have sung with practically everybody who's ever opened their mouth. Will you please name drop and give I me the names name of some of the people you've worked with? Well, I've sung with Michael Jackson. I've sung with... Oh. Let me... Let me, let me caution you. If you begin to applaud for every one of these, they only get bigger. Listen, I mean, listen to this. Just wait, and then we'll give them, like they do at award shows, we'll give them all a round of applause. George Benson. Yeah, keep going. Uh, Steely Dan, I was yeah. a Babylon sister. Yeah. Paul Simon. Yeah. Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Just a Any other passing fancies? No. Oh, just do you like learn by working with those people? Oh, I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot. Uh, amazing things. You learn... Um, recording technique. You learn very often, unfortunately, you learn how not to be. <clears throat> not with that particular li list, I must mention. But that's, that's when you're working behind other talents. Now, how many right. albums have you made yourself? Uh, so far, I've done five. Of the four prior to this one, were any hits out of there? And if not, <laughs> no. why? Why not? I was with a bad record. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't say, say no, no, you, no, you can't say that, you <laughs> fool. No. No. I was with a record company that was in a lot of financial trouble, actually. All right, now let's leave and it at that. they had a very difficult time trying to promote records. Plus, they were known as a jazz label. Yeah. And I wasn't really singing jazz. They had a hard time crossing the product. I remember the label well. We'll leave it unnamed. <laughs> yes. Many, many talented people with that label. But Ooh, when, yeah. when your career is in a position where it's in somebody else's hands, like right. they were having financial difficulties, right. what's that do to your head? Uh, it makes you crazy. It made me very crazy. I, I had gotten into writing about five years before I signed with this particular record company, and in trying to get out of the deal with them and going through a lot of heavy mental changes, I uh, couldn't write anymore. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't think of a thing to write, not a single thing. Are you all right now? I'm all better. Did you write the next song? No, <laughs> not that much better. <laughs> Just what, bit what is it called? This tune is the title tune from the album. It's called Every Home Should Have One. And we're trying to tell you something, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Patty Austin.